welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1,000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Rabbit Seasoning and with me today I have the Rabbit and the Seasoning, my good friends Matt Hunter and Manny Cruz, the Toonie Tenor. Say hi. Yes. When I was thinking that I had to do a recording, this cartoon sums it up perfectly. My first thought was, oh no. Not again. Yeah, but that's my thoughts when I'm trying to edit you. <laughs> oh no, not again. <laughs> Just to get started, so this is, as mentioned, Rabbit Seasoning, released on the 20th of September 1952. It's the 660th in the series, and is directed by, well, who else? Chuck Jones. So, this cartoon, naturally, very obscure. No one's ever seen it. It's only in, available in 7th generation VHS tapes. No, I'm kidding. It's on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 1. And it was then remastered again for the Looney Tunes Platinum Collection Volume 2 sets. And I'll have links below. No, you can't see this cartoon on YouTube. It'll just get taken down. You will not see it. But in case you haven't seen it, well, this is one of the most famous cartoons of all time. So, if you're one of the few that haven't seen it, Elmer is out hunting, Daffy tries to make it that it's rabbit season, and you see for yourself, again, this is one of the most famous cartoons of all time. But in terms of trivia, there's really only one, and that this is the second in the so-called Hunters trilogy that Chuck Jones and Mark Maltese did, consisting of the previous year's Rabbit Fire, this one, and 1953's Duck, Rabbit, Duck. Each one takes place in the different seasons, with this one being in autumn, I think? Yeah. yeah I think. Yeah. But that's pretty much it for the trivia, so we can chat, chat about the cartoon. So first thing I want to point out is, Matt, I apologize that you were not on the Rabbit Fire review. I don't know what came over me. You're despicable. Yeah, I know. I think you, I think you were just busy <laughs> yeah. at the time, so I thought, you know what? Yeah. I'd better make sure yeah. you're on this one. This one, like the other two, really, is an all-time classic, and this was one that clearly Chuck Jones and Mike Maltese had too many ideas for just one cartoon and so they kept coming up with gags and they ended up doing a trilogy like you said with one being in the springtime one being in the fall and one being in the winter time and of course we don't really know and technically i think duck season at least in texas is is in the winter technically but it's obviously in these cartoons it's always duck season <laughs> and daffy is trying to pretend that it's not duck season to fool elmer fudd into shooting bugs instead of shooting him these were the first cartoons to pair Bugs with Daffy, other than the cameo in a, an earlier Frank Tashlin cartoon, a black and white one called Porky Pig's Feet. But Bugs is really just the end gag in it. But this is the first time they really paired them together. And some people say it's not a fair fight. There are critics who say every time Bugs Bunny makes an expression that dooms Daffy and that Chuck Jones made Daffy too mean. And I'm like, first of all, in all of them, Daffy is, A, just playing pranks and having fun just so he doesn't get shot, which he does anyway. <laughs> but B, Chuck Jones really didn't originate the mean or mean-spirited Daffy Duck. That was Frizz Freeling. And that goes all the way back to 1940 in the cartoon You Ought to Be in Pictures, where Daffy tries to trick Porky Pig into quitting his job so he can be the star of the studio. And even so, you get cartoons later on from this that Frizz Freeling did with this kind of newer, less wacky Daffy. And where I would put it is, as Chuck Jones Daffy would throw Bugs Bunny in front of a bus to save his own skin, Frizz Freeling's Daffy would be driving the bus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, there's a big difference. This Daffy's just having fun, and he gets more and more frustrated the more times he gets blasted in the face. And it has some of the most quotable, hilarious dialogue of any Warner Brothers cartoon ever. This is just a, a, a classic. I, it's my favorite of the three in, in the trilogy. Pronoun trouble being my, my favorite line in the whole bit. Ha! That's it! Hold it right there! Pronoun trouble. But I also like the, would you like to shoot him now or wait till we get home? Shoot him now. Shoot him now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that. You keep out of this. He doesn't have to shoot you now. He does so have to shoot me now. I command that you shoot me now. And at one point, Bugs and Daffy are, are kind of teaming up to evade Elmer Fudd when he's shooting at him. And they go down in the rabbit hole and, you know, Bugs asked Daffy, <laughs> you know, go up and check if he's still there. <laughs> and Daffy pops his head up out of the hole. You hear the gun blast. He goes down with his face all messed up, and he goes, 
still lurking about. Is he still there? Still lurking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, no thanks, I'm driving. <laughs> no more for me, thanks. I'm driving. Yes. <laughs> No more for me, thanks. I'm driving. Just the face. Just, this is Mike Maltese. He could turn a phrase like nobody else, and this is just perfect for that. And I just like this cartoon a lot. I also wanted to point out that all of these, this whole trilogy, in fact, something happened back in the 90s when Cartoon Network started getting copies of these cartoons to air. Eventually... I think in 2001, I think it was, they became, for a long time, the exclusive place on American television, anyway, to see Looney Tunes. They pulled them off all the other networks, they put them all onto Cartoon Network, and unfortunately, a lot of the copies that Cartoon Network was sent by Warner Brothers were awful. In particular, there were some prints that were sped up, they were time-compressed. A lot of people think it was because... When they dubbed them for foreign language, sometimes to get it to sync up, they had to speed it up because, like, for example, like in Latin American countries, people speak faster. Some people just say it was because of the frame rate in other countries, like the, if you want to get technical, NTSC versus PAL. But I don't know what it was, but they were terrible, terrible prints, and they were time compressed, and the voices were off. So Daffy sounded like Alvin the Chipmunk. Just terrible. So it's really nice to see these HD prints finally in the limelight again and showing these cartoons the way they should be seen. Because they're light years away from what we're seeing for decades. Oh, definitely. And they restored it twice. So they use, I guess, it was off-the-shelf kind of thing for the Golden Collection Volume 1 and they cleaned it up a little bit. But then they went back and redid it in HD and, yeah, it looks absolutely magnificent. And that's what this video yeah. will show, of course. But... Maddie, but you were on the first one, of course, and now you're back here. It's like, yeah, all right, fine. Fine, you're here. <laughs> what do you think? Is this one better than the first one? Or what are your thoughts on this second ah, one? This is a tough question to ask because normally I would say that this one was my favorite of the three. But when we did the recording of Rabbit Fire, I'm like, man, this one is, is an excellent cartoon. And I also really, really enjoy duck rabbit duck but i think the last one is easy to remember because it's set in the winter it's snow and all that other stuff but a lot of times and i don't know if you guys will agree with me on this one that i get confused with the plots of these first two ones which one had the elephant gun gag or which one had the pronoun trouble or which one had like they start blurring after a while at least for me but it doesn't stop the fact that all three of these cartoons are just absolutely hilarious and i'll reiterate the point i said before in the commentary for rabbit fire that if you had to boil down one specific cartoon that anybody it doesn't matter if you're a hardcore looney tune fan like us this is the cartoon that most casual looney tune fans will recognize like you can't go anywhere without saying rabbit season duck season and everybody knows what you're talking about that's more for rabbit fire but just that whole idea of the dynamic between Bugs and Daffy and Elmer. This is the essence of Looney Tunes cartoons in itself and that's why this cartoon it just holds up so well after all these years. And revisiting this one, and as I mentioned to you guys prior to recording, it's nice to hear it in the correct pitch because Matt, I remember those days too of watching this one on Cartoon Network because I never saw this cartoon as I like to say, prior to my conversion to the Church of Nerd in uh, 2000, 2001, when I started getting into the history of these cartoons. <laughs> it sounds great now. It makes the humor work so much better. You mentioned the scene that I really enjoy. As someone who doesn't drink, when he's like, oh, no thanks, I'm driving. That scene cracks me up every single time. And not that long ago, I was chatting with a buddy of mine, and they brought up the pronoun trouble scene. And so throughout the entire cartoon, obviously Jones and his animators are just knocking it out of the park. But as I was watching it this past time, I'm just saying, my God, Mike Maltese, you could argue this is his best cartoon, just with the wordplay and just the dialogue. And obviously kudos goes again to Mel Blanc and Arthur Q. Bryan. Mel Blanc's, the lines as Daffy, were having me just absolutely laugh out loud. I mentioned to begin the oh no, not again. Oh no, you don't. Not again. Sorry. 
And when Bugs and Daffy are quote unquote rehearsing their lines, he doesn't have to shoot me now. Shoot him now. Shoot him now. And it's just how dry and how boring they're reciting their lines. It just makes me think of the times I'm like, I'm rehearsing with my buddies, you know, a song. All right, how does the song go again? All right, in this section, we go da 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 da. And like, we should start singing the parts to each other to catch up where we're supposed to be in the music. And we're just like, all right, it goes like this da 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 da. And then you do your part da 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 da. And then you hit the meat and potatoes of the music itself. Let's run through that again. Okay. Would you like to shoot me now or wait till you get home? Shoot him now. Shoot him now. You keep out of this. He doesn't have to shoot you now. Ha! That's it! Hold it right there! Pronoun trouble. As someone who's involved in the arts, it just made me think of that. All right. Quickly, let's go through the line. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Here's the main part. This is where we screwed up. Here's where we need to fix it. And <laughs> see, I'm just laughing just thinking about that, <laughs> that particular scene right there. I have to wonder if that was kind of a, a, a self-parody in a way, because the way Chuck Jones described it anyway was that he would have the you know, dialogue script and they would go with Maltese and Blank and Jones in the room and Jones and Blank would switch and forth between the roles. Like Jones would play Bugs and then Mel would play Bugs and they'd go back and forth. And knowing what a perfectionist Chuck Jones was, I imagine they probably had to do a bunch of different line readings for this. And at one point, I'm sure it might have made them laugh, and they might have just said, okay, that was funny, let's do that. <laughs> like, make it dry, make it like, yes, we, we've rehearsed this. I can just imagine, with Jones being such a perfectionist and also being such a funny person, I could see that being a self-referential thing there, which makes it all the funnier to me. Yeah, definitely. But let's have a look at the cartoon itself from start to finish. This is one of those shorts where I think we've seen this one so many times, but... Hey, this is really is one of the greatest cartoons ever made. It's even in the top 100 Looney Tunes book, which totally deserves to be there, even though some people are like, oh, all three hunting trilogy ones in the 100, but they're all three great cartoons. So anyway, uh, this one definitely deserves to be in there anyway. But I love the opening with the signs. If you're looking for fun, you don't need a reason. All you need is a gun. It's rabbit season. It's rabbit season. Yes, <laughs> and we see a million rabbit season signs, and this time around I'm laughing at just the whole absurdity of the fact that Daffy's really gone overboard. How many signs do we see in these opening scenes here? Just to really drive home the point, he must know that Elmo is really, really stupid, and he probably needs all those signs <laughs> to get him to his prey. And even then, <laughs> even then, Bugs is standing next to him, and, and he goes, Well, no, as a matter of fact, I haven't even seen a rabbit yet. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's just, it makes it even funnier. But initially, looks like Daffy's doing this just to be a, be a bit of a dick, right? He's just doing it, right? Awfully unsporting of me, I know, but what the hey, I gotta have some fun. But then he adds the line which makes it right, in my opinion, where he goes... And besides, it's really duck season. So he actually gives a reason why he's doing it, as opposed to just doing it because he's just hateful, vengeful, like it if he's feeling short. Yeah, there's no real malice in it. He's playing a prank to keep himself from getting shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I don't know if you guys noticed, and I think this is part of the genius of this short, you, you don't even realize until you're looking for it, but two-thirds of this whole short is just wordplay. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's gunshots here and there, but there's not much by way of action. It's mostly just the three characters talking. It's, it's done so well that you just forget about it. And I guess this, this would have been really good for, good on the budgets at the time. And you really don't see all three on the same shot either. You either have two or one. But you guys already mentioned the pronoun trouble. Um, Linda Jones herself, and you can see that in a Rabbit Fire review, she confirmed that yeah, that's her favorite bit in the entire hunting trilogy. And I'm in agreement with you guys. It's probably the best moment in the entire hunting trilogy absolutely brilliant and just seeing the frustration on daffy where he's trying to see what's going on here why am i not winning here and he's just trying all these different things and it always fails it is fantastic i love that and bugs does at one moment this pretend shock of a look i don't know if you guys noticed when daffy says he does have to shoot me now and bugs is like oh like he's got that shocked look like he's playing it up it's <laughs> yeah, it, it reminds me of that bit in an earlier one where Bugs is going up against a Wily Coyote, Operation Rabbit, and Wily Coyote is reading him the riot act at this door that he puts up in front of the rabbit hole, and Bugs kind of does this little f feigned, oh my god, right before, you know, and then of course you get the yawn and the door slam and the whole bit, but he does that same kind of thing. He's like, oh, really? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And 
Jones, at this point, as we all know, knows exactly how long to hold a pose for. And I think there's a perfect example here <laughs> where Daffy has no idea what to say. He goes up to Bugs, he holds that pose, and Bugs is like... Yes? Yes? And Daffy's <laughs> eyes just shrink. He's like... Uh, I have a lot to say to you right now, but <laughs> the, the frustration. And again, Jones mm-hmm. knows how, how long to hold that pose for. And yeah, Bell Blake's delivery, as you mentioned, Manny, just superb. The whole, yes. I wonder how many takes you did to get that right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just, it's fantastic. And yeah, Pronoun Trouble, just one of the greatest Looney Tunes moments of all time. And it's probably my top five favorite Looney Tunes moments of all time. And yeah, Daffy just continues to rationalize his way out. He even gets blasted for doing a hypothetical. <laughs> and that's just... He's like, I can't win here. He does a hypothetical scenario and he still gets blasted. So yeah, it's just <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. Look, you're a hunter, right? White. And this is the rabbit season, right? White. And if he was a rabbit, what would you do? Yeah, you're so smart. If I was a rabbit, what would you do? Well, I... Not again. But, as mentioned, first two thirds of the short, we got the wordplay, and we get action. Elmer's like, you know what? I can't wait any longer. It goes after him, and then we go into the rabbit hole where they have that temporary truce that you mentioned. And again, in all three of them, they do have that temporary truce. As you mentioned, Daffy is just doing this just to protect himself from duck season, but he decides to mess up Bugs as well. And Bugs decides, all right, I'm going to cross-dress once again. <laughs> how, gra- <laughs> how great does Bugs look in that little get-up, as you guys would say? <laughs> but you do have to wonder, and this is how stupid Elmer is, it's like, what exactly is this woman doing in the middle of the forest looking like that? It's just... <laughs> <laughs> And how does it fool him every single time? I think almost every director did the Bugs Bunny cross-dressing bit, like it was the character's shtick, but it's usually against Elmer Fudd, and it's like, is Elmer really that dumb? <laughs> and I guess he really is. So, he is, and, and and Daffy just can't believe <laughs> yeah. it. He cannot believe it. He can, his reaction, and he does that little sound effect when he clicks his tongue. Like, yeah. yeah. He's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just looking at this with absolute disbelief, and he's going up there, he's calling Bugs out, because he knows it's Bugs, of course. That he ain't stupid here. He's calling him out, <laughs> and then Bugs' perfect response I would love a duck dinner. And that leads to my favorite animated bit in this whole short the, the animation of Elmer being all love crazed after being kissed. Yes, I would just love a duck dinner. <laughs> and the music Where he gets the the big dopey eyes and he's just got this silly smile you stole face. the words right out of my <laughs> mouth because that scene every scene that little piano thing brum, 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 bah! every time i see it i just <laughs> burst out laughing and matt you probably remember this but one of these shows the looney tune show or the chuck jones show one of those compilation ones on cartoon network used to use that clip in, uh, as part of the commercial or one of the bumpers for it and it never fails to make me laugh. They used Daffy's yep, little tongue click too. thing. And it was like this sophisticated scholarly narration or something. And they're like, all the fancy pageantry of the Bugs and Daffy show or something. And they try to be sophisticated. And then it goes, we know what you like. <laughs> yeah. And I like the fact that we get a variety here where, okay, you could say it's a repeated gag from the first one where Bugs cross-dresses as a hunter, right? But I like the fact that here he's just cross-dressing as a regular woman again i have to mention why would she look like that seemingly in the middle of a forest but whatever <laughs> you go with it just alma alma you love sick <laughs> individual you just <laughs> works so perfectly daffy realizing okay here's his chance to try and get the upper hand he's like i apologize ma'am for suspecting your integrity <laughs> that line <laughs> delivery and he even kisses Bugs' hand and everything he just he goes all in and now's your chance Hawkeye shoot him now and then we end with a nice little throwback to earlier on with the whole pronoun trouble and all that it's like shoot him when he gets home and yeah we get that nice little <laughs> and Elmer has a nice little home I, I didn't know he lived in the woods but I guess he does in this one he's yeah. got a nice little log cabin 
And they go in, and Stalling plays Home Sweet Home, and he walks into the, the cabin, and you don't see anybody get shot. You just see the light from the shotgun blast. <laughs> <laughs> Not questioning that, of course, Elmer Fudd is firing a gun in his house. <laughs> a shotgun as well, so that would cause a yeah. bit of damage. <laughs> Because if there's anything hanging on the wall in there, God bless it, because it's gone. <laughs> yep, 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 exactly. And we get the perfect punchline saying at the end, You're despicable. It ends at a perfect note. I just don't see how it could have ended any other way, really. Matt, you were mentioning Home Sweet Home was used, so... Manny, that's a great segue to you. There's not many music cues in this one from what I see, but what do we hear in this short, aside from that wonderful little piano riff that we hit, you mentioned it's before? It's time for me. Yeah, 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 we get the point. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I was bummed out when I looked at the cue sheet. I was like, oh yeah, there's not that much musically. There is one thing in particular that's not on the cue sheet that I will bring up that just it gets me every single time. So yep, like you said, obviously we have the Merry Melodies theme starting it off. And Matt, as you mentioned, Home Sweet Home, which I go into detail in one of the older Mary Melody shorts. I forgot which one in particular, but if you listen to one of the older Mary Melodies on the channel, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, check them out. I go into detail about Home Sweet Home. But I would be remiss... If I did not bring up that this is one of my absolute favorite uses of, drum roll, written by Harry Warren and Johnny Mercer, you must have been a beautiful baby during the scene where Bugs dresses up as a woman. <laughs> I... You're not going to be taken in by that old gag. Isn't she lovely? Oh, Chef's Kiss, one of my absolute mm -hmm. favorite arrangements of You Must Have Been a Beautiful Baby. I would say this cartoon, and a coincidentally another Jones one, Frigid Hair, would probably be two of my favorite uses of that particular song. And I just love that song. Every time I hear it, it makes me laugh uncontrollably. I just think of the, the faux Bing Crosby impression of it. Oh, yeah. You must have been a beautiful baby. Boo, 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 boo. You must have been a that beautiful was... baby. Boo, 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 oh, boo, 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 boo. I know. I, I'm trying to think what short it is, but I know exactly the boo, 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 or whatever it was. But the cue that I wanted to talk about in particular, I actually have it written down on my phone in capital letters, stalling cue. And what is... That stalling cue in particular. It's a little melodic phrase that happens during the scene where Bugs is interrogating Elmer when he's at the hole. It's a ba 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 da 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 da. And every time I hear that cue, I have to document it because it's one of my favorite stalling originals. If you're not out in 10 seconds, I'll blast you out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, Wabbit. Now I got you. What's up, Doc? I forgot who it was that I spoke to a while back. Uh, I'm probably getting it wrong. It might have been Devin Baxter. Hey, Devin. That he said that it's similar to a melody, a little excerpt that Stalling used to use in his time working for the iWork studio. That cue, I've heard it also, besides rabbit seasoning, I've also heard it in Two's a Crowd. <laughs> it's in the Chewin' Brewin'. It's in Alibaba Bound. And I think it was rather poetic that the most prominent use of this cue in my mind is the first official Bugs Bunny cartoon, A Wild Hair. And same thing, you All know, right. the first time he ever says, what's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? Shh, there's a wabbit down there, and I'm trying to catch him. You hear it, da, ba, ba, da, 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 da. and I thought it was kind oh. of poetic or... It's uh, like That's when I was right. rewatching it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's the same cue 
in the same type of scene where Bugs is interrogating Elmer while he's about to blast a rabbit hole. And I'm thinking, did Stalling do that intentionally? Huh. Or it was just like, hey, I'll use my little excerpt during the scene. But I thought it was really cool that it's kind of bookended each other. Like when Bugs is already an established star and then when Bugs was still a new character. I have never noticed mm-hmm. that, but you're absolutely right. And I bet it was. I mean, the whole Hunter trilogy is kind of a back-to-basics callback to a wild hare. So that makes total sense, Manny. I never even noticed that. And I've seen both of those cartoons a million times. I've heard that tune a million times. I just never thought of it. But wow. Okay. Yeah. So Manny's here to connect the dots. <laughs> yes, I am worthy. I am worthy. Just, every time I hear that cue, and like I said, I've, I've written it down so far in about five cartoons. And I actually had this written down for this particular cartoon. And I forgot that I wrote it down prior to reading it. But it also reminds me of another cue that's similar then it goes, bottom, bottom, ba, ba, da, 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 da. It sounds similar. It's in a different key, but the melodic contour is kind of similar. That's a cue mm-hmm. that you hear in a Porky's Hired Hand. I think when the fox is stealing the chickens, it's like stealing from my brother. And another cartoon I could think of is Porky's Baseball Broadcast. It was the theme song of the dog when he's looking, you know, pardon me, pardon, pardon, when he's looking for his seat. And I would say that these two stalling originals are very similar to each other. They're in different keys, but the melody is kind of similar and kind of like what I said earlier And I think it was Devin was the one that pointed out that it's like a variation of something that he used to do when he was working at Iwerks before he came to Warner Brothers. It was either Devin or it could have been possibly uh, S.C. McPeter that mentioned it. But one of those guys. So thanks for making that correlation because I haven't seen many Iwerks cartoons in general. So I haven't really noticed it. Unless it was a pincushion man, which I've seen a million times. (laughs) Or Balloon Land is the actual name of the show. (laughs) Well, Flip the Frog is out, so definitely... Check that out. That's a great set, by the way. Shout out to Steve Stanchfield of Thunderbean, who was able to get the license from, I guess the iWorks family actually owns Flip the Frog, and he was able to get the official blessing from their family and then also get the original negatives to those cartoons, and they're great. It's such an extensive, in-depth set. I haven't really had a chance to look at all of it yet, but... Worth your time, absolutely. Well, I know what you're doing on Christmas Day. You just sit there and watch nothing but flip the frog <laughs> from start to finish, the entire set. One other small little musical thing that I noticed that I always get a big smile on my face. Of course, the cue sheet doesn't have it because it's a stalling original, but obviously the cartoon starts with Bugs' theme song, What's Up Doc? I like how in this version of What's Up Doc, at the end of the credits, you hear the vibraphones playing. I'm a sucker for a vibraphone. And speaking of music, when Daffy starts putting the foot stamp or the Bugs' wabbit twacks on the floor, and I just like how the stamping sound and the music are slightly off with each other. It's like syncopated. I like how it sounds too. And of course, when Daffy starts sneaking away, you hear the strings playing pizzicato. Boop, 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 It also makes me think of every time Sylvester's sneaking around, you hear the same thing. Boop, 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 Just, oh, Mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. The animation, too. Chuck Jones used to have this thing that he talked about in his books called Illustrated Radio, where he said that a lot of more modern cartoons that were really dialogue-heavy tended to be more like illustrated radio plays and the animation didn't illustrate what was actually happening. In this case, you have a really dialogue-heavy cartoon. In fact, that's kind of the humor of it, but the animation, if you turn the sound off on this one, you can still understand what's going on. You can get a laugh out of it anyway, just the expressions in this. To all the people who say Chuck Jones was a hypocrite and didn't know what he was talking about and he did too much of that, well, just watch this one on silent. I'll tell you, it's brilliant. 
And as I mentioned, two thirds of this short is basically just wordplay. And the fact that he was able to make wordplay really interesting, it just says it all about his skill as a director. A lot of people might say, oh, it's really Mark Maltese. He did all this wonderful wordplay. He's the real genius here. It's like, no. If you gave the same script to another director, it may not have even been close to being as good as this particular short, in my opinion. I don't think Frizz could have done it like this, but I, it's anyway. Sorry, you know, Anthony. I, so you just reminded me of something. First off, I did not make a Simpsons reference in this video, but I will now because you just gave me two ideas. One in particular was at the very beginning during when you see all the signs uh, appearing. And I noticed, I was like, wait a minute, the word your, it's missing an apostrophe. And then later on when I think it says straight ahead, the word straight is spelled incorrectly. And of course I'm thinking, well, I, I hope somebody got fired for that blunder. But then I started to think, Daffy's a moron. He made these signs and he didn't bother to <laughs> proofread them. Yeah. But I'm just like, either they didn't spell check it himself or it was intentional to just show how stupid Daffy is. And I loved it. The layout is Maurice Noble and background is Phil DeGard. So pretty much prime Chuck Jones guys right there. And... I would think that was intentional for Daffy to misspell and you know, have bad grammar and stuff because he's Daffy Duck. But would this be the first Maurice Noble then? Because I was so used to not seeing his name for the longest time going, when's he coming? When's he coming? But when are we sure going to get enough. to the fireworks factory? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is his first short. Mm -hmm. There we go. Wow. Got a bit of trivia for you. I'm going to pretend that I knew this. <laughs> this is Maurice Noble's and first short. what a way short. to start. I knew that all along. Yeah. I, I knew that all along, <laughs> yes. And I'm not going to edit it to make it look like I knew it all along. But no, that is actually true. I, I was going... I knew, I knew he was somewhere towards the end of 52, but anyway. It is. There it is. Yeah, here's his first credit. He was involved, I know, for some of the snafus and Mr. Hooks. He was involved in some of those as a layout artist but no this is his first credit on a looney tunes short so there we go one bit of uh, info that i knew all along so there you go <laughs> uh, but uh, in terms of a score come on guys am i really gonna rate this less than a 10 no it's a 10 out of 10 even if you prefer other shorts as a favorite or whatever you can't deny that this is a masterpiece on every level 10 out of 10 no questions, and deservedly belongs in the top 100 Looney Tunes book as well. Yeah. You guys agree, or you guys want to do a 9.75 or something <laughs> ridiculous? I would say that's pretty unanimous. Yeah. Manny, no, wouldn't you agree? I'd give it an 11 out of 10. <laughs> no, it's... Oh! Whoa. It goes to 11. <laughs> no, this cartoon's a masterpiece. Excellent cartoon. 10 out of 10, hands down. It may be quote-unquote overplayed, but it's quote-unquote overplayed for a reason it's as simple as that it's a great cartoon mm -hmm. no question i enjoy it even though i've seen it a million times so there you go but yeah that'll do it for this one thank you so much for watching and until next time take care you're despicable dun 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 dun